Hi, I'm Matt Clare. And I'm Julia Forsythe from the Center for Pedagogical Innovation. This presentation is about the spectrum of pedagogies in the e-learning initiative here at Brock University. MTCU in Ontario defines a number of online courses. We generally take their definitions for the courses that we're working with. They range from online synchronous conferencing course, so this is something that has more than 80% online. And because it's synchronous, there could be students and instructors meeting in real time. Uh, again, possibly through video conferencing. But there's still the option to have that last 20% as a face-to-face -face component, typically a lab or a face-to-face uh, -face proctored exam. But we consider those to be online and synchronous because of these same time meeting, real time meeting moments. Related, online asynchronous courses. So again, 80% delivered electronically, but it's on a timeline that doesn't require any synchronous meeting between instructors and students. There's still a timeline for when assignments are due, topics are discussed, but it's uh, ranging across hours and days and maybe even weeks, but uh, it still has a timeline nonetheless. And that's a asynchronous model allowing people to accommodate their other commitments to that course. And then beneath 80% online, between 50 and 80% online, are what we call Brock University blended learning courses. And the ministry calls those hybrid. Basically, 50% of these instruction or other components are online, the remainder in a face-to-face -face typical lecture or lab seminar scenario. All of these courses have uh, some very similar components and the, the first thing that you have to consider is that the lecture fundamentally changes so it's not a, a just a lecture delivery you have to think about the interaction between the instructor and the student but also there's a lot of interaction between students and instructors and students directly just with the content where the, the instructor is not involved at all and then there's also multiple levels where there's the students uh, interacting with each other and teachers will actually interact with other teachers and sometimes it's the content interaction with each other. All of the assignment, all of the uh, courses will have a digital submission of assignments and there'll be digital distribution of grades and feedback as well. So we have these number of uh, definitions or uh, allocations of online components to describe these courses, but the pedagogy that is employed in these can range across hybrid blended to the various types of online. So in those uh, areas we've to make things easier, we've categorized courses in these three following areas. Textbook-based and form-based discussions, so using a lot of the LMS's discussion tools. It's easy to think of these as things like seminar courses or graduate courses where there's a lot of uh, discussion in it. There's also a format we call lecture screen captures with online quizzes. This involves an instructor typically speaking to uh, PowerPoint slides or drawing graphs or notate, scientific notation on the screen. If you are familiar with the Khan Academy style of instruction, it's much like that. And related, it has uh, online quizzing to allow some evaluation of students uh, through a computer. And then there's the open web style. So that's using our LMS where it does best, but then linking to the rest and having blogs, wiki, social networks, and other open tools employed in the learning and bringing it all back together through a, a conscientious instructor curating that and um, having grades and other important things that we need to keep on the Brock side there, but take advantage of the open web. We call this a spectrum because there's actually a lot of elements that are taken from each of these three different types, but we just want to be able to categorize them for simplicity. So let's look at textbook-based and forum discussion courses. So here's Pekin 2P92, uh, Foundations of Adaptive Physical Activity and Disability studies. This online course, fully online course, is delivered primarily through the LMS with some modules. You can see here Professor Jay Patterson is giving a introduction to the course and describing student, for students what they can expect in that course, about the types of activities and learning they'll be experiencing and why he made a choice to remove this course online. So this course in particular has modules along the left that were laid out in some software and um, all the videos were done uh, with captioning, as you can see, it's been turned on there. So if for um, accessibility reasons, you can also uh, read what he says in the video. But this, do this doesn't use a great deal of video. It's mostly text-based in the module. you can access information when you feel necessary. Um, so you don't have to keep up with the class. You're basically at your own pace, which hopefully is advantageous. Um, you have faculty members here. Oh, yeah, faculty members. Focus. Under your undergrad degree here, 
As you can see in uh, module one, we included that introductory video and then it clips into module 1b which has a, a combination of, of pictures and text which is basically um, a transference of what he would do in his his PowerPoint presentations with a lot more narrative written in text. This particular uh, content the instructor and the CPI chose to use additional software to lay out the content in a tool called SoftChalk. We like this tool, others are just as appropriate when they are needed. This allows him, uh, the instructor, to build upon this content in a more rich media than simple web pages. This is the forms for the uh, uh, course we just looked at. These forms are broken up by the labs in the course and then the um, respective modules have their own area inside of that. So each TA was responsible for their own lab and so as students would post uh, discussion into the, the module and task areas, the TAs would then grade them. So this would be uh, one of the forms of digital submission in addition to the assignment tool. So this is something that all the other students would see and interact with that who, who are in that lab, whereas the assignment tool would just be for students and the instructor and TAs to mark. English 4B37, Monster City, a fourth year English course that was developed entirely online or delivered entirely online. It also makes use of forums and so we took the time to do a redacted version of the forums. You can see here some of the discussions students were having about topics. And the difference between this uh, forum layout as opposed to the one before is that the entire class had a, f a full discussion. And one of the things that Dr. Dennehy had mentioned is that the, the quality of writing increased because of the public visibility of uh, the students being able to read each other's posts. Transitioning now to online lectures with screen captures or online qui and online quizzes. Here's an example of a first year math program, a core course across many uh, disciplines here at Brock University. This course has face-to-face uh, -face versions, but this is the online we're looking at here. The instructor created this content with mathematical formulas, uh, working students through problems, and created these uh, instructional videos with the benefit of a piece of technology called a Cintiq, which is simply a tablet that mirrors your own computer screen. So for our instructor here, um, the screen that she had on her machine was mirrored on a tablet which she could mark up with a stylus and thus add formulas and uh, talk to these slides and explain things in a visual way for students in a way that is quite difficult with simple uh, computers in PowerPoint. Um, we were able to augment her computer with software or hardware that we loaned her let her record it and uh, create something that uh, is quite useful for students. Yeah, one of the great benefits is that you can go back and replay things over and over again. So if you feel that you missed something or misunderstood, um, you have this uh, added additional interactivity. Another course that uh, is a blend of approaches is Astronomy 1P01, Introduction to Astronomy. It actually uses a lot of online quizzing for the assessment of the 500 students enrolled in this course. They did make use of the forms, but it was just a general area. It was not required. It was just a place for people to touch base. Most of the assessment took place in the quizzes, and they were done weekly based on the modules. As you can see, the example here is quiz one. The computer can, of course, mark it, and further, it can draw these 25 questions here from a much larger pool, 1,500 questions, randomize the position of answers and distractors. Basically, if students decided to complete these quizzes side by side, they'd spend much more time describing the topics and the concepts being uh, quizzed at that point than anything else because talking about positioning and the order of questions would uh, not help them at all. So transitioning into the open web, this, actual, this course actually takes advantage of both the previous methods of uh, screen capture and online quizzing and some of the open components of the web in that its video is actually posted in YouTube. We have some video posted on a private video server because that's appropriate for some instances, but in this case uh, the physics and astronomy department's commitment to open online resources um, led them to posting their video in YouTube, which um, also led someone else to discover the contents uh, of their course and the description there and was 
obviously comment is on here as you can see on the screen and we're using a different context here's another uh, fully online course com 2 of 100 this course makes use of extensive blogging and the problem the one of the great things about blogging is that it gets students to write a lot but the problem with blogging is that it's very difficult to keep track of all the different websites when you have a class of about 200 so what we used was the assignment tool um, as on the right, you can see the, the weekly modules, and each module had um, an assignment uh, a corresponding with it that ha they had to do an initial blog post and a summary blog post. So on the left, you can see that the, um, the students had to submit an address to the URL based on the module readings and the videos that they watched for that week. And the benefit of that was that uh, TAs and instructors alike could keep track, they could go out, read the blog out in the open web, and then come back and assign a grade. We've got workflow, we've got a way to distribute feedback and grades privately, and we've got a timestamp for both parties, students and, instru and the instruction crew, about when things are submitted, where it is. Um, um, our best practice definitely around involving blogs and such in online courses. And this screenshot just happens to be the mobile version. Well, the LMS is really great for keeping track of the grades, and so and it's a secure medium for that. So it allows you to have that nice balance. Here's an example of one of the student blogs. Um, this instructor had the students choose themes or topics of interest to them. So there were many, uh, many different groups, and one of them was an environment group. So this student in particular, um, the assignment was to do a podcast. So you can see an embedded audio clip here inside of her blog post that she had to do a, a reflection on and write about in addition to writing uh, to creating the podcast which was then put in the blog and then she would take that URL at the top of the page and she would submit that to the assignment tool. This is a blended course that we worked on through the initiative, a Dramatic Arts 3P95 uh, which is a praxis course and this offering was centered around theater criticism. This course is a really interesting um, uh, new addition to, to Brock University where we have the students going out um, as a sort of service learning activity and they will go into um, different productions um, and do embedded criticism which is uh, before the actual production they will go and spend some time with the cast and crew of any kind of uh, production and they will write a preview um, and then they would go into their face-to-face -face class and they would discuss it and they would uh, write together collaboratively in a multiple um, ways inside the LMS and then they would watch the show and they would also write a, uh, a review of the show afterwards um, and then together the students would edit, refine and um, decide which pieces that they wanted to put on the public blog. So this was curated um, and edited collectively as a group. Um, this is part of the initiative to increase criticism in the Niagara region as we increase our arts presence. Um, so it's a really interesting uh, cross-section of all of things uh, related to our strategic mandate. In this blended course, the CPI had a role in providing a physical space for that 50% and scheduling it in a less than typical way to make sure that um, the types of learning that the instructor wanted to have were possible. Um, but by the same token, um, a lecture hall or similar space was not left empty for 50% of the time. We also uh, play a role in involving our partners in ITS with this course and um, ITS video conferenced in some uh, marquee guest lecturers into this course to provide discussion. Some of that discussion actually spilled onto the social web. So part of the course was also including um, uh, tweeting uh, when you were watching the live stream. So some of the uh, presenters were in Scotland or New York City and they would be presenting from their location and then conversations could also go on uh, in Twitter and this is just a visualization of those conversations and the connections between what people were saying on Twitter based on um, using the hashtag Dark Critics. If you ever wanted to look that up you could see. So the website is darkcritics.com and, the, um, and this is a visualization of all the, the Twitter action that's happening. So this is also another example of using the open web, which is an open tool available for anybody to use. So that's a brief overview of the spectrum of pedagogies used in the e-learning issue here at Brock University. There are many more courses that we didn't have get a chance to speak of, and a good chunk of the e-learning courses being developed currently at Brock University come through this initiative, but many more have also been um, brought up through other means here at Brock University and have arrived online quite successfully. 
Hopefully this gives you an idea of the types of pedagogies and practices that are involved in the spectrum and gives you ideas for what can be adapted to courses uh, at Brock University. If you have any questions or um, want to try and implement any of these things, you are welcome to contact us at the CPI or visiting this website.